Good morning! In honor of Deb Holland being confirmed, I thought it was worthwhile to do two episodes this week. Welcome to your morning cup of cow shit. So often today, when you hear about Point Reyes, you hear a talk about how important the land is to the people there, the deep connection with the land, the history of the people and the land, the stewardship of the people working the land. What a shame that when that comes up, they aren't referring to the people that lived there for thousands of years in harmony with the land and the other creatures that lived there. We're talking about celebrating ranching. We're talking about glorifying a practice that crippled an ecosystem in a couple hundred years compared to a people who lived with the land for thousands of years. Some people say the history of the coastal Miwok traces back to 20,000 years. Some people have problems with humans existing beyond whatever their religion's timeline says existed. So let's just give them a few thousand years. A few thousand years of harmony. I'm not saying the indigenous people didn't kill some of the animals that lived there. I'm not saying they didn't harvest from the land and from the sea or even engage in prescribed burns. I'm saying that what they did was a working system where everything got to continue to exist in a healthy ecosystem for thousands of years while everyone still had plenty. And all of that was erased by a system that we praise today that actually ended all of that. That's why today, while we celebrate Deb Holland and we focus on the coastal Miwok people and other indigenous people of America, I also am going to tie in the topic of grass-fed beef. How does that make sense? You will see. Grass-fed is often presented as some way for people to feel good about continuing to consume beef. Because compared to industrial level grain fed animals that are pumped full of antibiotics just to survive, it seems wonderful. That doesn't make it good. And there are more and more articles coming out now debunking this idea that grass fed is so wonderful. Now, you'll either believe that or you won't. So I'm not going to argue that one. I'm going to show you an example of the best of the best of grass fed small, local, family, sustainable, whatever buzzword you want to throw on it to feel good about the product. Point Reyes National Seashore. Grass-fed cattle. In order to have grass-fed cattle, you need to have grass. Well, Point Reyes has grass, right? Depends what time of year you're looking. And that window is pretty small. I'm sure you don't want to just take my word for that. So let's start with the word from the ranchers. I'm going to go back to the 1961 congressional hearing where ranchers flew to Congress to testify against, not for, against Point Reyes National Seashore. This is a statement from Joseph Mendoza. We have some beautiful ranches out there today and delightful and beautiful green hills you will hear described here with dairy cattle scattered all over them. But they are not accidents. Those green hills were made by man, tractors, and cattle. If you took man off that area and took the cattle off and took the tractors off of it, the things that plowed those hills and reseeded the grasses and fertilized them, you would have nothing more than just an area covered with scrub brush. Native plants, how terrible. Alfred Grossi adds his voice. It is open country, no trees or flowers to enjoy, but only grazing area and permanent pastures. Is he defending himself or condemning himself? Which we have worked very hard to get. I have worked very hard improving, improving my ranch, just as other ranchers have done this. The Point Reyes area, fences and permanent pastures and buildings and many other things. I know this, if the cattle were taken off these pastures, there would be no beautiful green hills as you see them today. It would turn into nothing but brush in a very short while. 
A couple of other ranchers go on to talk about how hard they worked to convert the native landscape into what they wanted to use the landscape for. I'm not going to read all of them because this is going to carry on forever. Let's get to the point. Today, the areas in Point Reyes National Seashore that look lush and green year-round are the areas where ranching does not take place. These green hills that the ranchers provided to us replaced vegetation that was perennially green. They didn't turn the hills green. They killed the native plants. They destroyed the important root system of that land, got rid of the animals that lived there to convert native habitat that worked for other human beings for thousands of years into an economic system that works for their business. The land provided, the land all ready provided. We have the indigenous people to prove that, as well as all the animals that were able to also exist there with the indigenous people. We've been so indoctrinated to think that the word agriculture means something that is unquestionably good that we don't realize that agriculture is the replacement of a system that was already working. We just rejected it. I can only imagine how many people didn't like that statement, so let me move on quickly. You might simply say, well, this is the system that I like, the grass-fed beef system. Problem is, it doesn't actually exist. These grassy hills that provide for these grass-fed cattle don't exist. Let me go back to the testimony of the ranchers. In the section of the testimony, just under where the ranchers were talking about how hard they worked to convert the area to dairy land, uh, the lawyer for the ranchers goes on to say that it's thanks to them that this area is usable and is attractive enough for people to want to use it. Now, let me ask you this today. When you go to Point Reyes National Seashore and you want to go on a hike, where do you go? I'm going to pause. I actually want you to think about this and answer it. Do you go to the pastoral lands? Do you go to the pastures? If the barbed wire isn't enough to keep you out, how about the desolate fields of weeds and dirt and manure? No, you drive to Chimney Rock, you drive to Drake's Estero, you drive to the Elk Reserve, and then you get out of your car and you do what? You walk through the native brush that has been described as a problem, yet it is exactly what attracts people to the park. Why? Because it's not just brush. It's everything that comes with the brush. To pretend that it's brush and no other vegetation is BS. To pretend that it's brush and no other life of any other kind is BS. In fact, it is the existence of the native plants that allows for the existence of the native wildlife that we enjoy so much. You can't get rid of the habitat of the wildlife and still have the wildlife. But again, you may be of the human supremacist mindset that I don't care. I want my grass-fed beef. Let me go back to the rancher testimony. One of the committee members of the hearing asks Mr. Mendoza the following. What percentage of feed and grains and dairy feed you give your cattle, or what percentage of the feed for the dairy cattle, comes from outside the area? And what percentage comes from your ranch? What a good question. Mr. Mendoza replies, he says, I can give you that on the milk stock. Four months of the year, we get our total feed from the pasturage. And eight months, we do not. Uh, Mr. Saylor asks Mr. Grossi, do you feed any grain? Mr. Grossi says, yes. Mr. Saylor says, how much do you feed during a year, roughly? Mr. Grossi says, maybe about 300 tons of concentrate per year. 
We come to a kind of a strange part of the testimony. So the lawyer for the ranchers says, those dairy people who have devoted their lives, as Mrs. Mendoza has, to beautifying and cultivating it. Let's pause and look at the beautification and cultivation. These people find that because they have beautified it and cultivated it, that now it is desired to be a park. We come to a strange part of the testimony because somehow one of the committee members, despite hearing over and over again how hard the ranchers worked to convert the land into pasture, says, so it's natural pasture there? And Mr. Mendoza says the only farming situation there is to reseed the pastures, brush control. Uh, the brush comes up and you have to chop it down and reseed it again. That's fighting nature. How does fighting nature equate to naturally occurring pasture. They just discussed how hard they have to work to keep nature from coming back. If we go back to Mr. Grossi's testimony about them only being able to feed off the land four months out of the year, let's fast forward to today where they can't feed off the land 100% ever. There's not a single day that you go out to Point Reyes National Seashore, that you won't see cattle around their feeding troughs. That is imported feed. That is imported hay, that is silage, that is grain. It is not cows out in pastures. The fact that you see a cow out in a pasture sometimes does not mean that they are 100% grass-fed. In fact, in order to be called grass-fed, you only have to eat a little bit of grass and you get the grass-fed label. The rest of the time, these cows are wandering through fields of desolation. It boggles the mind to go out to Point Reyes National Seashore and look at the endless expanse of nothingness where once native vegetation and wild animals existed and think that people actually applaud that. Now, in the good months of the year, you're still talking about trampled patches of green. That's not 100% pure grass. Have any of you gotten out of your cars to examine that green up close? You'll be surprised at what that green consists of. You've got some reseeded grass, and you have a lot of noxious weeds. You have a lot of invasive plants. In fact, none of it is native. None in a national seashore. None. That got killed off thanks to this very industry a long time ago, despite surviving for thousands of years with other humans who instead chose to work with the system that nature provided. Now we celebrate a broken system and we focus on some green and tell ourselves, oh, grass fed. Consider why we're here today. Consider why I'm making these videos. Consider why you are listening to these videos. What woke everyone up to what's happening in Point Reyes? The ranchers want tule elk to be killed because they do what? Eat grass. The system is so broken out there. The land is so depleted and the struggle to reseed the land with enough grass to still qualify these cattle as grass-fed, it's so broken, they can't even allow native tule elk to have some grass. That's not a working system, people. You can't share some grass with the native animals. It's so ridiculous, I'm at a loss for words. Okay, I've got to wrap this up anyway. All right. A lot of people don't like what I had to say today, and you are going to exist in denial of it so as to continue on the path you're on. And to you, I say, go to Point Reyes National Seashore. Please, by all means, go enjoy a wonderful hike through those pastoral lands, which somehow in this testimony were conveyed as being what attracts people to the area, what the ranchers worked so hard to make Point Reyes beautiful, because Point Reyes wasn't beautiful until the ranchers converted the hills into dairy pastures. How goddamn ridiculous do you get? But I digress. Get out of your car, hop over the barbed wire fence, 
and enjoy a stroll through <laughs> land. That's not why you go to Point Reyes. Don't sit here and lie to me and yourself and tell me that's why you go to Point Reyes. And yet, despite that, one of the excuses that is used to justify the ranchers receiving shockingly discounted lease rates is because they have to deal with people enjoying that land that they provided. Land no one wants to go on. <laughs> so to wrap this up, my challenge to you is to please go enjoy the wonderful beauty of those pastoral lands and please take photos of it and please tag it as Point Reyes National Seashore. Go to the Point Reyes National Seashore account. Do you see them posting the reality of the ranchers anywhere? No, no, no. The advertisement of Point Reyes National Seashore focuses on all the wonderful things that are not the ranches. Let that sink in. The Park Service can't possibly take photos of what the ranches do and promote it as a positive thing despite in writing doing that. Visually, there is nothing to support that because the land is covered in